Welcome back to Bumps and Burpees. Today I'm here with Claire, who is a good friend, but also um, Bumps and Burpees favourite women's health physio. <laughs> Thank you so much for chatting today. Welcome. Lovely so we you. we wanted to just start today. I've got a couple of questions here. Well, we put out something on um, both our, <laughs> our our Instagrams, and we got some fairly similar questions coming through. So we just thought we'd go through them so that we can share the answers. So, number one, and probably something that lots of people want to know, what is the difference between a women's health physio and a regular physio? Great question. So a women's health physio, or pelvic health physio, as we're kind of moving towards, but we're still known as both really. The only reason we've started to be called pelvic health physio is because we also treat men. So obviously, uh -huh, men don't want to come and see a women's health physio. <laughs> so yeah, so women's health physio is a pelvic, but some people don't treat men, so that's why we'd stick kind of with the women's health name. Um, so regular physio or a normal musculoskeletal physiotherapist you'd go and see for kind of any of your normal aches and pains so back pain shoulder pain knee yeah. pain ankle pain all of those sort of things i mean essentially there's diverse ranges of physiotherapy that's what i mean so i didn't really want to say regular but yeah that's probably the wrong word another one <laughs> another type because i mean there's like yeah we work on itu with stroke patients yeah. and neurology so it's vast but i guess when you come down to musculoskeletal seeing someone in a clinic or an outpatient clinic you've got musculoskeletal or you've got women's health and we are specialists in the pre and postnatal period but yeah. any pelvic health for life really right so that okay. can be at any point so tr some people treat children all the way from like okay. bed wetting late late bed wetting oh wow yeah so and anything in that area basically. anything in this region <laughs> pretty much but okay. essentially it's very tricky because this region is affected by other bits of the body so even though yes our specialism uh -huh. is knowledge of the pelvic floor knowledge of the pelvis it doesn't mean that all of our treatment would just focus around the pelvis because you know, your upper back wall is what's going Very on. Very true, in okay. Pelvis. So yeah, so that's also, I guess when you break it down, we are specialists in the pelvic floor, uh, urinary problems, bowel problems, sexual dysfunction, um, pains during pregnancy, uh, but that can be in your hands as well, it could be in your back, it could be right, in your pelvis. Right, it's to do with that area. Yeah, and, and if you were seeing, if, if somebody was seeing a different kind of physio, yeah. would they refer to someone like you, or is everybody sort of trained up? In no, the same way. Ge generally, what will happen is if, say, you were seeing a, a, a musculoskeletal physiotherapist and then you became pregnant, uh, right. generally they would encourage you to see a women's health physio. Okay. Though, it's, some musculoskeletal physios have advanced knowledge and have treated loads and loads of pregnant women. Okay, but so there you is, feel comfortable. Yeah, there is specialist knowledge, so I think generally most of them would either work in tandem. So in the clinic I work in at Six Physio, I, you know, I'm a women's health physio, I work with lots of other ones, so they'll definitely come and talk to me and it might be that I'm like, you know what, what you're treating is an ankle, carry on, <laughs> don't give me an ankle. Um, but otherwise they might be like, actually this problem's now become much more pregnancy related, would right. like to transfer over to you. Okay. So never a clear cut line, unfortunately, with all these things. Okay, but, but the pelvis area yeah. <laughs> at, at all times of life. <laughs> yeah. Very good answer. A long answer for Okay, her. next question is... A lady here is going for her mummy MOT mm. next week and Great. wonders what to expect from it. So what, what, what would you do with a woman who'd come to you for a mummy MOT? So a mummy MOT is a postnatal physical check essentially. So we all know you go and have your GP check six to eight weeks generally, but that is a check for a variety of things. Um, there's always been a large onus on it being the clearance of exercise, but I think as time's going on, yeah. women are realising that you want to know more about physically. I mean, because often they don't actually physically check you, they don't no, have time, do they? Completely. And even if they did have time, actually, they're not mu a lot of GPs. I mean, some have a specialist training in musculoskeletal things. Mm. So, again, you might find someone in your GP practice that is, but a lot of the time it's not actually been something they've even been trained no. in. So, and a lot of the impact of birth and the impact of pregnancy is a musculoskeletal element. So, muscles and bo you know bones so the gp is looking at how you are in yourself and so much yeah exactly okay basically yeah completely so mental health but they're also thinking about hormonal health so contraception yeah. uh breastfeeding in 10 minutes exactly <laughs> thing. i mean there's so much to cover in that first yeah. six weeks to eight weeks of motherhood and you might have things that you really need to talk to your gp about but the physical side of things for a lot of women is a huge priority understandably right um so that's kind of where the mummy OT came from as an idea Different places provide different things, there's like postnatal checks and lots of women's health physios will provide a postnatal check. Um, what we're really looking at is you from top to toe yeah. and any problems that you might be having. So big things postnatally are posture, so posture changes a lot in pregnancy. There's also postures of mum life like breastfeeding that create lots of problems. Lots of 
lots of like, like this. this bigger breasts and we don't really necessarily think about maybe we've not had a bra fitted very well mm -hmm. actually our shoulders are really far forward so it can be really small things that you can come you're like my neck is really bad i've never had neck pain before mm -hmm. so we'd sort of be starting there if you have some existing pelvic pain we'd kind of reassess that and see how that's all looking for you um working our way down thinking about your tummy so a lot of concern for women is diastasis recti or separation or divericate because there's so many different words for it but essentially abdominal separation so we're having a look at that for you we're checking how functional it is that's being like how strong the connective tissue is between you can check that using your hands, your hands. in my clinic where i work we also use ultrasounds so we have an amazing ability to amazing. be able to see a bit more which i think for us as you know most exercise and most things you can see yourself in the mirror can't you and yeah. you have that visual feedback whereas a lot of the time you like identify what i'm feeling is right and that, that's why it's great for personal trainers to be able to refer yeah. to because I can check what I can what I think yeah. is the abdominal separation but I don't know exactly what's going on underneath. And so getting mm. your results back to me is just such an amazing, yeah. amazing feedback. And I think that's the thing like the abdominal area is so much more than separation. I think there's been so oh, much yeah. focus on the separation, isn't there? And but it's length and yeah, it's we can't like see whether it's like how deep. tight it's coming back up. Yeah. And, and you know, deep core, like how's your deep core working and, and how are you standing? So it's just like I think it's just a huge education for that woman to be like, where's your body at? Mm -hmm. uh, we provide a pelvic floor examination. Um, so check, you know, obviously if you've had a vaginal birth and you've had some stitches, we'll check the stitches and the scar. Um, if you obviously had a cesarean section, we'll check the cesarean scar and see teach you massage techniques. So I think that's an overview of kind of everything that we're looking at. But if you had something that was really pressing for you, you could come and ask. Yeah, you. we'd focus on that a lot. So I would say to women, like, what is your goal? What do you also? Some women come to me like, I really want to run a marathon in three months' time. And some women are like, I just want to run after my toddler in the park and not wet myself. Yeah, you that's know, true. Okay, so Very. Depending on who you are and what you want to achieve, my session will be adapted to you. Because there's yeah. no point of me just saying, well, these are the things you need to know. Because actually for some women, they're like, I just can't. You know, yeah, I've got some neck pain, but right now, I just can't really just deal. Get through my day. Yeah, and actually for me right now, I just need to be knowing that I'm not going to wet myself and I feel strong in myself again. And that's my focus and I'll deal with this another time. Which I totally respect, I get it as a mum, like you just yeah. don't have all the brain space to deal with everything. Um, whereas other mums are like, yeah, I need to be like tip top shade so I can go run, run. And I'm like, okay, well then that's a whole different yeah, thing that we sure. need to deal with. So yeah, so that's essentially we're looking at posture, um, you know, kind of your bone structures, your muscles, your tummy, your pelvic floor. And would that be typically yeah. like an hour? Typically an hour, Okay. yeah, absolutely. Um, you can bring your baby if you want to. It's totally up to you really. Someone like, I just need to have me time where I have an hour. Some people are like, I have no childcare, but I desperately want to come. Equally, you don't have to come at six to eight weeks. I have women that come at six months. Oh, yeah, that's actually like nine a very good months. point. They're like, I just haven't quite got round yeah, to it. Yeah, never enough. missed the boat. It's no, never it's too never late. too late. And I think that sometimes like, well, I'm a year down the line now, so surely everything's sorted. But we can still have things going on a year down the line if actually we've never done any kind of element of rehab or kind of got ourselves back into exercise again. So, yeah. which there's no judgment on that. <laughs> it's totally valid having been through it myself. But yeah, depending on who you are and what your life is, you just come when you're ready. Okay, brilliant. Question number three, what can I do in the first six weeks? So obviously mm. this elusive six weeks yeah, that we've all been sort magic of six weeks. <laughs> told that you cannot exercise before six weeks. Now this yeah. doesn't mean that you can't move before yeah. six weeks because I mean, you're about to have number two. Yeah. There'll be no option for you <laughs> we'll to sit still. You have to move. So yeah. what are the kind of key things that you would recommend people doing in those first six weeks? Yeah. So I think the thing is, it's so hard. And I think we love generalizations, don't we? And we love boxing stuff. Um, you know, for someone who's labored for three days and ended up with an emergency cesarean, it's probably going to feel different to maybe a yeah. second time mum who's maybe had a very uncomplicated vaginal birth with no tears so it's very very difficult to fully advise but generally in the first couple of weeks if you've had any stitches anywhere so whether that's abdominally or vaginally you just need to take yourself a bit slow yeah so not overdo it you know not be out in the park Ask for on help. day one have help you know hopefully partner's got some form of paternity leave or maternity leave depending on on how the partnership works um so yeah so taking it slow but if you want to go out for walks you know going out for some walks but listening to your body you know don't think oh i feel really great today go out for two hours yeah <laughs> have a coffee do whatever and then come back and then that evening you're really uncomfortable because yeah. the way kind of the body works is during that first 10 days is, is like lots of inflammation which is helping the healing of course the more you move some there's a sort of this window of like moving a bit helps with inflammation to moving too much can create more and that makes you really uncomfortable you may not notice yeah you've got to find your barrier so i always say 
sometimes in the first couple of weeks, just go for a 10 minute stroll. Maybe it's to the coffee shop, maybe it's to, to your local park with your toddler, but have someone else with you so they can run around with them. You sit on the bench, you're with the baby, and then maybe you take the 10 minutes back, but maybe half hour later. So think about that. Do your pelvic floor in that time. You know, get on with the pelvic floor. There's no time like the present. Yeah. And when you're feeding, however you choose to feed, that's the best time to do it. Because you are just Related still. to the baby. Yeah, you sat down. I'm not saying you're going to feel loads and loads because when you've got swelling within them with the pelvic floor, so if you've had stitches or slash just a baby's come out through the pelvic floor, yeah. you, you don't feel as much, so the sensations can be really different. But the more you use your brain and you, you make connection with the pelvic floor, the better and quicker yeah, it's going to Yeah, plus you're feeding multiple times a day. Multiple and you, times a day, <laughs> think, at night. And you think, right, okay, yeah. at least if you do it every other feed. Exactly. And I was actually really good overnight because I was almost like so tired. I was like, I've really got to focus on doing something here. That's true. So I was actually really militant at doing them overnight. Mm. When I was up every two hours or something, I was like, well, I must just make the most of this. I love Get a really that. strong pelvic floor. Um, <laughs> and it did need some work. So, you know, it, that worked for me. But I think it's just finding what works yes. for you. So that's your first time a couple of weeks. Um, but after that, you know, again, depending on you, sometimes there's some really like deep core exercises, and I always talk about a leaflet yeah. that's available free online um, called Fit for the Future, which has some really basic or Pilates exercises. So if you've done Pilates before, or put, it's really a, or put a link. Yeah, to put it a link yeah. because I find women just find it really helpful. Even if you just try one or two of those, but it's kind yeah. of firing up the deep core with the pelvic floor and getting you fully you're moving. Um, you know, sometimes getting, you know, week three or four, starting a few gentle squats, you know, essentially a lot of motherhood is squatting, bending down. I was going to say, I mean, sitting down, standing up, up sitting down, standing up Completely. all day long. So you are already squatting. Completely. You don't need to pick up the dumbbells and do it as a, an exercise. A workout. But, but sometimes just doing like 10 of a sit to stand every day, getting the feeling that your glutes are working, can make a huge, huge difference. Yeah, because if, especially if you've been working out the throughout the pregnancy, too, yeah. taking six weeks off, Completely, it's actually probably going to do you more harm than good, isn't it? Yeah. So that's great to know that you yeah. can just do a little bit. You know, not sure. I think we're so like, you know, we boundary exercise is like, oh, you're doing exercise. You'd be wearing your trainers and yeah. a sports bar and you have to be but, in a gym. But actually, there's like movement, isn't it? It's yeah. just movement. And actually, you're, as a mother, however, one, one, two, three, four children you've got, you're, you're moving. You know, the baby needs to be picked up, it's crying. You're constantly moving and actually. If we just say don't do anything for six weeks, by that point your body's sort of really deconditioned. Yes. So actually six weeks is quite a long time. So doing a little something is great. Um, so yeah, and then sort of like your five to six week mark, again, depending on you, um, you know, you can start maybe building in more lunges or things like yeah. that. But um, it really does depend. And then when that six week mark comes, I mean, we would always advise that you're physically checked by someone. And, and six weeks is not like six weeks check, check back to the first thing you did before you were pregnant. Yes, I, think, I, I guarantee you'll be really upset with how you perform. Yeah, that. You'll be, just... You won't be where you used to be. And I think I have a lot of mums who come to me after they've done that. They say, but I just went, I just went straight back to my body pump class. Yeah. And I just really, it wasn't good. Because I the doctor said I it. could. And I completely hear that, you know. I completely... Because the doctor doesn't know really what you mean when you say can I go back to exercise? Yeah, I mean, exercise can I, can I go back to uh, rock climbing or yeah. can I go back to Pilates? It's like it's so different. So listening to your body really. Exactly. And I think, you know, that's where we're really the, the postnatal care is changing. Yeah. And I think as physios we're trying to say to women, you know, we don't want to be the fun police. We don't want to stop you doing <laughs> what you love. Which I think physios can sometimes come across as yes. we're the ones that are like well, I don't know if we should be doing this, we don't know if we're doing that. And as you were saying, well, actually, as a mum, what are you doing? What can we maximise? What can we yeah. utilise? And I was just saying, think about that first 12 weeks. It's like, just like a whole rehab window. Like any other injury. Like if you twisted your ankle, okay, you'd probably take the first 10 days, you might be on crutches or something. You'd let the inflammation go down and then you'd start your rehab. You wouldn't go and then you'd be Straight like, well, I've done my running. six weeks afterwards now and now I'm back to... Very good. So Very I was saying, like, you know, think about any other... Sometimes it helps us as women because I think birth can be just like put in this box of like, well, birth is birth. But actually, the things that happen to muscles, if you've had a tear or a cut to a muscle, okay, that's in the pelvic floor. But if you put it in your quad, how would you approach a quad tear? Yeah. In the same way, you just think about it in the same way. But I think we just don't treat the pelvic floor as a, as a, as a muscle group. It's funny, it, isn't it? Just this like little pelvic floor that can just be put through anything and then crack on at six weeks. And yeah. um, you would rehab, you know, like what, what Olympic athlete would tear a hammy and then six weeks be like, sign off, off you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it true. just would never happen. Very true. Um, and I think we treat mums just like that sometimes. And I think just, just think about it as like a 12-week window 
of ongoing rehab. Not say that twelve weeks you're then ready to hit the ground running. No, but, but it's, it's the time when you process. sort of you've put that time aside to look after your body. And, yeah. and actually, sometimes I find that women get themselves to a much stronger baseline than they yeah. were before because totally. they put all that time in. Because I don't know about you, but we've never really put that twelve week, six to twelve week period in any other time in our life because no. we've just grown up being busy bodies running around. And actually you spend more attention to your deep core. So lots of women are like, actually I was really crap at Pilates before yeah. and I'm still a bit rubbish now. Um but you know then they're like I actually really want to like feel like I'm strong again. See it as core. like a great, I've got a blank oh, slate, I can work with it. Yeah. Okay, amazing. Well that's a lot of stuff you can get going <laughs> with in six weeks. I've got a question here about postnatal sex, which I know you love talking <laughs> about. <laughs> All those okay, so we have a work. question saying Sex is quite painful. Mm. Did I go back too soon? So she hasn't said when she's exactly. gone back. Yeah. But I'm guessing it's quite soon after having a baby. Yeah. I mean, is there a time when you recommend going back or is it really just yeah. up to you? Again, it's it's such a tricky one and it depends on the person. I think generally like most women are like the first six weeks they're not even interested. Most women. <laughs> some some, some are women not though. <laughs> I think I get it, it depends on your birth, but the general principle is if you're still having some vaginal bleeding, so the bleeding that was naturally you have after having a baby, yeah. that's obviously generally not the time the women want to, but equally it's not the time, because from an infection point yeah, of view and stuff say, like that. Yeah. So we generally just say, while that's still going on, not the time. Um, from a scar healing or stitches point of view, you know, stitches can still be around four to six weeks after. Not all of them, but some of them might still be under the surface, so they can be a little bit uncomfortable. It depends on your tear and kind of use different yes, stitching yeah. for different things. Um, so yeah, so that does depend. But I think, I say, uh, let's talk about it as like a general six week window, because I think most, most women don't. Yeah, okay. Um, I think if it's, the, the norm, normally, it's a little bit uncomfortable that first time for a, a few different reasons. I can reasons. imagine it's also a bit in your head that you're totally. nervous and you of course. tighten up. And... I mean, again, what other time in your life do you have like <laughs> so your most intimate area is either maybe torn or cut, just stitch back together, and then it's like six week winter. Yeah, great, crack on. It's, yeah. it's a really, right, really mentally weird sensation as well that you're like, that's been so sore down there. And what's something that was my pleasure area became this like pain area. Yeah, and yeah. now I'm trying to switch it back to a pleasure area. So there is a lot, and obviously sex isn't just physical, it's, it's emotional, it's yeah, a psychological thing, it's a connection thing. So yeah, there's so much going on, but I guess from my, my knowledge is more physical side of things. Um, some women just actually find that if they do a little bit of perineal massage, something they might have done before, so actually oh, themselves, do like, yeah, do it after. They actually find that one, they just they they test out. Okay, how is it feeling down there? Yeah, without any pressure with anyone else. There. Exactly. That's a good you idea. Know, so you know, just giving it a little. You know, again, if you had any other scar in your body, generally we'd say you kind of give a bit of a massage, work on it. Mm -hmm. It's obviously weird. It feels weird sometimes because it's in the vulva and the vaginal area. Yeah. But that can really help. Do it on your own. Yeah, exactly. Just have a feel and see how it feels okay. to you. So that can be really helpful. I always say to women, if it is like absolute agony and it's just you absolutely cannot have sex, then that, I would say, really does need to be spoken to someone about because okay. sometimes when scars heal, they sort of do too good a job and they overheal. They're too tight. No, they, over, they actually oh. produce almost too much scar tissue. Uh -huh. it's, there's something called overgranulation tissue. Okay. And I do see women who come to me in clinic and like, I've just been told to carry on, but I just physically cannot. It's like, it's just oh, yeah. so raw. It mm. feels raw. That's the only description. It feels like raw flesh. And sometimes I'm like, okay, well, that's what's going on. And actually, you need to see a doctor or a specialist midwife. They just remove it, oh, not okay. in a like a um, not in like an operation procedure, um, but they just kind of remove it and then it's gone. And then generally, okay, okay. If it's fine. So just pushing through if it's agony is it's, not the answer. No, it's not the answer because then okay. also then you lose your confidence. Then you're more likely to tighten your pelvic floor beforehand because you're apprehensive, yeah. understandably. So I think one taking your time, you know how soon is too soon again i think that's got to be a personal decision yeah um, it, and and the thing for some couples is like some couples decide not to have sex during pregnancy so they're like we haven't had sex so then for that's nine quite months. a long time, long time. time. Yeah. but some are like oh we have sex right up to the end so what two months off now there's no no big deal yeah. for us so yeah. i think it's got to be an individual couple basis but if you are struggling from a physical point of view um and sometimes the other thing to notice i think we don't always understand this as women is that those tears or cuts that are done with like an episiotomy is actually to the muscles of the pelvic floor. Yeah. And again, I think we don't really think about that. But again, a muscle which has got a scar in it can get very tight. So sometimes it's uncomfortable because your pelvic floor is too tight. And that's where a women's health physio or pelvic health physio can actually come. Okay. Help so you. it really is, it's not a stupid question to come not to a women's all. health physio. Not at all.
I asked really every single me. woman afterwards, I'm like, and those women were like, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been near him. Was, yeah, exactly. He did this to me. Okay. Um, but lots of women are like, oh, actually, yeah, it's not what it used to be or... And it's really normal for just the sensation to be different. You know, everything generally is a little bit more open and that can carry on for a few more months. Working on your pelvic floor to build up tone will yeah. really help with that. Um, so that's a big factor of it. The fear that the man, man's going to feel like things are different. I can't say any man's really generally ever reported that to me. <laughs> Friends and, and clients, you know, partners that have mentioned it. But there's, that's a natural fear. Um, so yeah, there's lots of multifactorial things. But generally, the principle is if you work on the scar in some way, okay. massage... See what yourself is if it's completely not improving yourself. Work on your pelvic floor. Yeah. Sometimes the strength of an orgasm will also change. So when we'll just feel like actually it's just not, not sensory. Quite as strong. Also, the vagina can be drier. So we're, we're breastfeeding, our estrogen is uh -huh. lower, everything's drier. So actually using a lube, which you may never, never have had to use in your life before. That's a good This tip. is the time. So even if you had someone like, I've had a cesarean, it still feels really uncomfortable. But it's the hormones, isn't it? It's, there's a hormonal element of it. So again, this is the thing, everything's very, there's so many multifactorial yeah, But elements. it's good to know that there, you know, it, it, if there is something you can do. Yeah. And if it's still not any better, then go and see uh, yeah, definitely. And definitely. don't feel silly, because I guarantee you they've probably been asked that Everyone's question like, oh, that the same day. Been, yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard this, and I'm like, I'm <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> nothing shuts fair, literally <laughs> nothing shuts fair. Yeah, I'm always, okay. always, always open. Right, so our last question is, how do I know if my C-section scar has healed? Mm. So obviously, like with every single thing I ask you, it depends, doesn't <laughs> it? Depends. it? But how would one go about checking if their C-section yeah. scar has healed? So generally, um, good signs are what it looks like and also how it feels. So yeah. those first few weeks, obviously there's a lot of swelling and there's a lot of discomfort. And lots of women come to me, like, let's say like four weeks, being like, oh, it's still super swollen above it. You know, there's maybe been a bit of scabbing on the scar, but there's still a lot of swelling above it. And that okay. is really normal and really expected. That doesn't mean it's not healing. It means actually it's doing a really good job it's of healing. Right we now. need swelling. Swelling mm -hmm. means that body products are coming to the area to assist new cells forming and healing. So this is a good thing. Right, swelling okay. is good. So essentially, yes, you want the scab to form, like any other cut, you want the scab to form. Um, the midwives will come in those kind of first few, uh, the first week or so, take the stitches out for you. Then you'll just have that normal kind of scab. The scab will then heal. Obviously, if there's any point that it has a discharge from it or anything else like that, that needs immediate medical attention. So back to the hospital. Back to the hospital okay. or back to your GP or speak to your midwives or something. It depends okay. how you are on your postnatal journey. Fine, but not a physio. That yeah, that's not doctor. something I can help with. Yeah, okay. straight to the doctors for any kind of concerns about wound healing. Okay. Um, but after that, basically, it will scab, the scab will come away, it will look very, very pinky. Um, you'll still have that sort of swelling around it, it will still okay. be tender. Um, and then four to six weeks is a point when you think, actually, generally things feel a bit better. Right. That is often the time when women totally overdo it. They're like, oh, I feel great now. Yeah, okay. I'm going out for a much longer walk. And then they're like, oh, it's actually really sore again, or there's lots more swelling above it again, yeah. or below it. I mean, it can be either. Um, so I think that's the four to six week window. I would say to a cesarean section women is actually just like, remember, you're still healing. You've had Don't get surgery. carried away. Don't get carried away because mm. you feel better. You will feel better. And that's brilliant. That's just a lovely sign that you're getting better. Um, and then at six weeks is generally the time we encourage you to start touching it. Massaging people, it. Women say to me that they, they don't like touching it yes. because it sort of lost some feeling around the yes. area and it feels weird. Yeah. What, what would you suggest for that? To put like a towel on top or something? Or Definitely. So for starters, I'm like, you know, don't even worry about touching the scar if you feel like you can't, but just actually the lower abdomen. Okay. Because sometimes we're so afraid of that area yeah, afterwards yeah, that we just got to avoid the whole thing. So I'm like, you know what, just use your, your lots of women use oils on their tummy afterwards anyway, okay. like if they've had some stretch marks or even if they haven't. So I'm just like, just start sort of massaging the lower tummy. Just start engaging with that area because okay. actually it will help. The whole region it will help. So I would say just start and then, and before if you want to have clothes on, you know, you can just start stroking the area with clothes just getting on. getting feeling yeah. the nurse sort of. Yeah, totally. And then I just say, you know, don't even worry about thinking about massaging it, but just just stroke the scar to start with. Okay. Um, you know, if you're in the shower and you're having a wash, just start kind of gently touching okay. it first. Good idea. Um, it can be a very emotive thing for women, scars, especially if it's been a more traumatic Emergency. delivery. Yeah. And so, therefore, it's, if you're feeling like you really cannot touch it and it's actually emotively giving you flashbacks or giving you really emotive, um, you know, you're really, really low or worried about it, then please, again, do speak to someone because 
that's very normal as and would well. that be like go back to your gp probably? i would say definitely gp is your first port of call yeah. uh 100 and you know they should be able to support you through that but yeah so don't feel alone if that's you um it's very very normal and sometimes okay. women come see me in clinic and they haven't even realized that they feel yeah, so because they might think baby blues i'm just a bit knackered yeah that's what it is but yeah, yeah but if they're feeling sense. like actually engaging with their body again or touching it is is, is bringing up a lot of emotion okay. and that is definitely something to go and help um, and that sometimes comes up in clinic with myself, so that's why it's a very slow, steady process. Um, so yeah, but generally then you can start massaging it again. And um, you know, lots of women are, like, are really worried after that that it's going to reopen. You know, if I touch it, if I play with it, you know, if I yeah. if I massage it, it's it's going to open. Uh, wounds only reopen if they're infected. Right. And you know that pretty early on. And so that, if you see any sort of discharge or yeah, any sort or of smell smoking. or yeah. Anything you just think, gosh, if I had a scar anywhere else on my body and it looked like that, I'd be like, that doesn't look nice. Right. That's a pretty good thing. Yeah, and also no one's going to feel like you're such a hypochondriac. You know, if things, even if you just go and they're like, everything's fine. They love that. They must love that. That's great. (laughs) We love it when everything's fine. But, you know, actually, if you're concerned or things aren't looking right, but generally you're still in the midwifery care in that time, so things are picked up very quickly. Yeah. Um, But yeah, if you have excessive, excessive pain, you know, pain that you're like, you're taking your painkillers and it's not touching it you can't move off the sofa, it's looking not great and it's a bit smelly, that is the time to go and get medical attention. Okay, so if you haven't got any of those signs, (laughs) then you're you're probably fine. Start slowly touching and everything, but if you do, then go see somebody. So that is a great answer to that question. Okay, so we're going to wrap up with those questions. We'll do another one of these because we we do get a lot of questions (laughs) like this. So Claire, it's very, very helpful for me. Um, But thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye.